Today we're looking at Mount Rushmore. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with Bell Ringer videos. Here at Mount Rushmore today in western South Dakota are the carved granite images of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Each face is approximately 60 feet high, with some of their mouths being as wide as 18 feet. Mount Rushmore is a symbol of pride and patriotism to Americans, but at the same time is a reminder of mistakes made in America's past. The Black Hills of South Dakota, where Mount Rushmore is located, are considered sacred lands by Native American tribes, such as the Lakota Sioux. The mountain on which the faces are carved was known as the Six Grandfathers, or Cougar Mountain by the Sioux. In 1868, the Treaty of Fort Laramie was signed between the Sioux and General William Tecumseh Sherman on behalf of the United States government. The treaty basically said the Sioux had the right to occupy and use the Black Hills. But in 1874, gold was discovered in the Black Hills, and just as it happened in California 25 years earlier, Americans began to flock to the area with the intention of getting rich quick by finding gold. Americans ignored the treaty signed barely six years earlier and forced the Sioux from their land. This led to conflict, which resulted in the famous Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876 and then the massacre at Wounded Knee in 1890. To this day, representatives of the Sioux argue that the federal government should return their land and honor the treaty. The name Mount Rushmore was derived from Charles Rushmore, who was an attorney from New York that traveled to the Black Hills in the mid-1880s to inspect mining claims. The story is that, that Rushmore asked a local man what the name of the mountain was, and the man replied that he didn't believe the mountain had a name. So Rushmore said, well, from now on, it's going to be known as Mount Rushmore. In the 1920s, Doan Robinson came up with the idea of a tourist attraction in which they would sculpt the needles, which are several eroded granite pillars in Custer, South Dakota, and they would carve them into figures of famous people from American history and the expansion west. Robinson contacted sculptor Gutson Borglum about the project. Borglum met with Robinson and they looked at the needles and Borglum said the sculptures could not be done there. And the two then looked for another site. Borglum and Robinson traveled to Mount Rushmore and determined this would be a good site for the sculptures. Borglum then convinced Robinson that the sculptures should be of George Washington and uh, Abraham Lincoln. But soon thereafter, Thomas Jefferson and Theodore Roosevelt were added to the design. Each president was chosen for a specific reason. Washington, of course, being the first president and considered to be the father of our nation, represents the founding of the nation. Jefferson because of his writing of the Declaration of Independence, but also because of him being responsible for the Louisiana Purchase, so he represents the expansion of the nation. Theodore Roosevelt because he led the nation into the 1900s as the country's economy was booming and the fact that he advocated for conservation and national parks. So Roosevelt represents the development and conservation of the nation. Then of course Abraham Lincoln being the president that led the United States through its most trying time, the Civil War, and his commitment to ending slavery. Lincoln represents the preservation of the country and the ideals of equality. In the summer of 1927, President Calvin Coolidge traveled here to the Black Hills and was convinced by Borglum and Robinson that the project needed to be done. Despite disapproval from local Native American tribes and environmentalists, the project now had the approval of the federal government and construction on the mountain began in October of 1927. President Coolidge soon signed legislation to fund the massive sculpture. Borglum spearheaded the project along with 400 workers using dynamite and air-powered jackhammers to remove over 400 tons of granite that now lay scattered at the base of the sculpture. By July 4, 1934, George Washington's sculpture was completed. Interestingly, Jefferson was originally to be located to George Washington's right side, but instead it was discovered the rock was too soft there and so the sculpture was then moved to Washington. Washington's left side. Thomas Jefferson's sculpture was completed two years later in 1936. Then Lincoln was completed in 1937. And then lastly, Roosevelt was the final one completed in 1939. Soon after, Gutson Borglum died in 1941, leaving his son Lincoln Borglum to finish the final details of the sculptures. Originally, the plan was to include the bodies of the president in the sculpture, but funding ran out before that could be completed. On October 31st, 1941, Mount Rushmore National Memorial was officially
officially dedicated and declared complete. It had taken 14 years and nearly $1 million to complete. Today, it's estimated that 2 million visitors a year come to this memorial, sometimes called the Shrine of Democracy. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.